Hello, my name is Karim Aghanem and I'm president of the International Center for Diplomacy. I'm also CEO of Africa, my home. I'm from Morocco, but I'm a Pan-African leader and I'm also expert in digitalization and more specifically uh, uh, civic technology because I work in the civil society and youth sector. And I would like to have two parts of this pre presentation talking to you about the uh, digital rapid transformation that we're undergoing today and how you as uh, young leaders and civil society actors can use digitalization for different purposes, more specifically in your civic work and also in your advocacy. Well, first of all, let us uh, talk a little bit about you and the digital world. That's very important to ask yourself, uh, what is your position in the world of digitalization? What do you know about digitalization? Uh, and do you have the basic skills uh, in mobile application, on internet use, and a lot of things, because digitalization is just a wow, bigger scale, a, you know, a bigger uh, scale uh, approach uh, where a lot of things fall in, but we're not, we're not going to talk today about digitalization because it, rec it, it implies a different types of aspects, uh, but we will be focusing more on civic technology. So uh, first of all, I want you to sit with yourself, take a moment, five minutes, see how do you see yourself in the digital world? Maybe do a SWOT analysis. Do you have skills in digitalization? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are the opportunities that digitalization offers to you today? Maybe think about your work, maybe think about your institution and just maybe think about how you use an internet, for example. And maybe let's, think, let's just think about social media, for example. How are you efficient, for example, in community management? Are you efficient in developing a social media strategy for your project or even for your own branding? What are the opportunities that social media today offers to you and what are the threats? So do a SWOT analysis. So I want you to begin to, you know, just take five minutes, no more. Just think quickly about your skills, about your knowledge of the digital world. And do you think that what you, what you used to know is what you actually, actually know today about digitalization or is it a different type of things? So maybe we can focus um, because as I said, digitalization you know, like is, is, is a sea of things. So, uh, let's focus on social media, for example. You want to do your own branding or social media strategy. First thing you need to do is identify the objectives. So for example, let's say you want to promote your, your presence in social media. So the first thing you do, why? Okay, let me create a Facebook page. Let me create my Instagram, my Twitter, my TikTok, uh, or even my LinkedIn. Okay, you create all these. What is your objectives creating all these? And what are you going to do with it? What content you're gonna drive in these platforms? Is it the same content? What is the level of efforts you will put in those platforms and how you're going to manage it and what is the time frame and the frequency that you will be using to generate content in these platforms or in these mediums, let's say. Okay, here is very important things. Do you have the capacity to generate good content? Improving capacity to create and generate Pertinent content for your target audience is very important. Why? Because you are in a different sector, 
you need to know your niche targets. Uh, today, you might create a very wonderful, nice video, very good content, very informative, very interesting. People might get knowledge out of your content, but hmm, you have maybe four, five, 20 likes. There is another person who wants to create content. He just performed a silly dance. He get 20,000 likes. This is the world that we're living today. Huh, you have to think. What am I going to do if I want to generate my own content and nobody is going to watch it, nobody is going to like or comment? Shall I change the style? Okay, you change the style. How are you going to mitigate the impact of what people want in the digital world? While well, people want to have fun, want to hear music, want to do... If I do a serious content, probably people would not listen to me. People would not watch my content. That's a challenge. Okay. Maybe you have to think about different strategies. Okay, I have a very serious content. How am I going to make this content easy and available to my audience that they would like it? Shall I say it in a different way? Shall I put some music? Shall I be funny? Shall I take a joke? Tell a joke, sorry. Shall I tell a joke to transmit this message? Okay. Maybe I have to think throughout my message to focus on certain key messages that would resonate with them and maybe tell it in a more funny way. Why maybe I, you see here, I said, why are uh, maybe are. Uh, I'm confused and you will be confused and you will think and think and think and say, how am I going to do that? Shall I sing a song? Shall I use entertainment education to transmit this message? Uh, okay, which language? How am I going to transmit it? Am I convincing enough? Am I have to learn how to speak to the audience? Um, well, yeah, you have to. If you need to, you have to. You have to be a very good speaker, you have to be very convincing, and you have to change your style. You should not absolutely be boring because today people do not like to read much and do not like to listen much. If you make a, a 15 minutes video, nobody will watch it. You have a challenge, one minute pitch. So I have to do a pitching exercise in order to formulate all what I want to say in this video in one minute. And it should be nice, lively, creative. And I need to use something funny, entertaining so that people will not get bored. And then I would not, first of all, fall into the bad bus. But at the same time, I want people to get a very educated message. So you live in these contradictions and challenges. So, but your most important thing is to study your audience and your environment in the digital world. Because your audience in your organization is not the audience online. We react differently online. So you need to know who are the people that you need them to read, watch, listen, like, comment, and share your content. Very important. If you don't study this, then forget about digitalization, forget about social media, forget about, forget, forget about your e-messages. That's the first step you need to do. Do you want to expand your reach and interaction of your post? Yes, of course. That's the goal. Now, there are people who would say, I need to expand my reach because 
I might probably have a source of income through YouTube or Instagram or, or. How, how are you going to do that? Is it with very, very good content or very light content or you have to choose? Or you have to choose how to manage between the two. It's very important for you. These are some of the good questions that you need to ask yourself. What are my objectives? And if I can be, uh, let's say, if you can measure your objectives. Do you have any monitoring mechanism? Because it's very easy to monitor something physically, but online is very difficult to, to understand whether you have impact apart from the number of likes and the number of shares and you know increasing your ad rank, et cetera. These are the things that you may know. But you need to have other qualitative, qualitative measures in order to see whether you're influential or not. And believe me, having 1 million, for example, funds or something doesn't make you influential. So the influence could be the type of messages that resonates with people and make them react. I know there are a lot of people who have a lot of funds in their pages, but people do not react in their pages, do not share, do not comment, but they have a lot of funds. And again, also the quality of fun. It's very important. The quality of messages and comments, the frequency of comments. And you know, sometimes people like, you know, they got into page, pages of people they don't even like. Just because they want to, uh, they are curious, they want to see their pages, they want to curse them, and, and, and. But you want to run an, a page with very good content, and then you want people to comment, like, and share, but at the same time, you want to have very positive comments. How are you going to do that? Well, simply you need a strategy. Simply you need a benchmarking. Simply you need to upgrade your skills. And simply you need to think outside of the box. And also simply you need to change your mentality because you need to be digital in your culture, in your mind. Your mindset needs to change. I know a lot of people who said, okay, yeah, I know how to use Facebook. I know how to use LinkedIn and blah, blah. But they don't have the mentality of the people that are on Facebook. They are very, very old fashioned in their thinking. They think if they're right, post a, an information like a press release, people would react. Well, who cares reading a press release on Facebook? Nobody cares. But if you put the press release on a graphically designed, beautifully graphically designed banner, you put uh, facts and figures, you put icons and pictures, and you put the right a focused message that tells the message that I need to know, I would react with it. But I don't have time to read a press release. You're posting a 450 words press release. It's too long. People today are so fast. You know, some people don't care. They said, okay. I don't care, I will post my press release. No, it's not about you. It's about the people that are reading your press release. It's about the people you want to react. It's the people you want them to react on your press release. So it's not about what you want. It's about what you expect from the people and how the people would be or may be reacting to your post. And if the information you want to post, you want these people to act, react, comments, change behavior, you need to set the right goals. That's very important for you because if you are a, online without any vision, without any strategy, 
You will be just someone who is ensuring his or her presence online without any influence or without any impact. And believe me today, you have to be online. You have to engage online. It's very important, the word engagement, and we're talking about it in a minute. Measurable objectives. You need to identify performance indicators that help you reach your objectives. So we call them key performance indicators, KPIs. And you know, if you're working on the digital world, more specific, specifically in social media, you will know KPIs. It's very important to have a performance indicators in order to know whether your strategies on social media are effective or not. Well, again here, what type of social media you want? Is, it, is LinkedIn effective for you? Maybe. Facebook, Instagram, Click, uh, Flickr, Wikipedia, YouTube, do you have to be in all of these? Maybe yes, maybe no. If you have to be in all of these, you need a strategy because you know it's time consuming to manage all these. Well, you could connect Twitter with Facebook and Instagram, etc. You might have that possibility to do so. But still, you cannot have the same message in LinkedIn as Facebook, as Instagram. It's very different. The content is the same, but the type of writing and posting the information, whether video or poster or a written content is very different. The style is very different. Can you imagine what you're posting on LinkedIn, you're posting it on Facebook? Maybe, but you cannot imagine what you're posting on Facebook to post it on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is very professional. Well, what if you are dealing with people maybe in China? Maybe you have to use WeChat, not even Facebook, not Twitter, not nothing. Maybe there is another platform that is convenient for your audience. So you need to study what is the best platform that you need to use. What is easier? What can you use? And where your audience is? So you have to choose the right a platform for you. How are we using each media? Very important to understand how you use Twitter, how you use LinkedIn, how you use YouTube, Facebook, Google, Printest, and all of these. They are very important because a lot of people are there, but not because there are a lot of people are there that you have to use them all. You need to focus uh, you know, on the most strategic ones. And you need to craft your content accordingly. Then I want you just to sit with yourself. Develop or improve your content. Pick up a message of your organization or may, maybe let's say uh, just a personal message. Just think a while. Uh, you want to promote something about yourself. Maybe you got an award. Maybe you were succeeding in something. Or maybe you just done a conference. Think about different scenarios. And um, what you're going to do is actually try to craft the message on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and on Instagram. That's enough. Are you going to craft the same message, the same thing in all these platforms? I would say no. The way you're going to post the message on Facebook is very different. Because on Facebook, 
you have all variety of people. You have your friends, you have contacts, you have a, your professional network, you have everyone. So everyone is receiving the message differently. So the way you craft in the message is different. On LinkedIn, it's very professional. So you doing, you're writing in a, in a business fashion way on LinkedIn. Twitter, it's just 140 characters. You have to focus on the right message, including a hashtag. So everything is 140 characters. So you have to be short. And then on Instagram, Instagram, you're not going to write. Instagram, you have to beautifully design, you know, yourself engaging in a conference and pick up a quote or a right message and beautifully design it freely in Canva. And then you can post it on Instagram. So you see here is different because for example, Instagram, it's the power of photo, the power of video. On Facebook, you're free to write even without posting a photo. On LinkedIn, it's very professional. And on Twitter, it's short and sweet. It's like a telegram. So it's the same message, but it is crafted differently in different platforms. Well, you will say, okay, that's a bit of a hard work. Yes, it is. You know, I myself talking to you, I have Facebook, I have Twitter, I have my personal page, I have my, my fun page, I have um, Instagram, I have LinkedIn, I have TikTok. It's, oh my God, it's too much. Sometimes I just say I need to stop because it's time consuming. You need a community manager. You need someone to help you. Sometimes you need a staff, especially if you are engaged, you know, in a lot of organizations and, and a lot of other things. You need really a graphic designer. You need a video editor. You need, you know, sometimes I do it by myself, but sometimes I had to stop. So you have to think about the level of efforts that you put it into that. And more importantly, how you're crafting the message, it tells a lot about you. That's your brand. That's your reputation online. Because all what you are writing, people are analyzing it. Today, recruiters and political analysts and everyone is analyzing your profile. If you want to be recruited, when you apply, if you are pre-selected, for example, the first thing people would do is Google your name or look for you on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever. So whatever you write tells a little bit about your personality. So you have to be very careful about what you are posting. It's very really important because it is part of your online reputation. And here, this is your first initial passport for digitalization. You have to improve your skills in these platforms. And we, we here we talked a little bit just about social media, but digitalization is beyond that. We talk about robotics, we talk about big data, we talk about uh, artificial intelligence, we talk a lot about mobile platforms, a lot of other types. It's very difficult to, to get into that here. But we, I'm just giving you just slight examples because when, when you are beginning your digital uh, life, you just start with the basics. For us, when we, when we get into digitalization, the first thing we think about is social media. We think about a blog or website. We think maybe about our mobile applications or whatever we put on our phone. And that's it. We don't even get higher to digitalize it to, sorry, to artificial intelligence or big data or whatever is part of a whole framework of uh, digital platforms. So here you have free and you have, of course, paid uh, monitoring and evaluation tools on your media. So there are a lot of tools that you can use to monitor your presence. And you monitor even whether uh, there are positive or negative comments about you. 
So you can have a monitoring dashboard that monitors what you're posting on your social media. It's very important to use that. So these are just some of the tools that you can uh, use, for example, Google Analytics, so Social Bakers, Facebook Insights, Social Mansion, TweetDeck, Sysmic, HotSuite, and that lot. You know, every year, you know, we discover a platform, which is quite interesting. I mean, even the platforms you use to, to create your content management on, on a, a website, website creation, now there are a lot of different types like WordPress, et cetera, et cetera, that you can use to create your own website or blog, et cetera. So you, you will have a lot of tools. Uh, many of them are free and there are a lot uh, that you, you can subscribe um, to get them. Um, so a, the question you need to ask yourself, Quite interesting, social media, for example, keeping with social media, is it a trend or necessity? I think today it has become a necessity because there are a lot of corporate organization and even politi political organizations that are using social media. So um, there are part of it, which, which is part of a trend, of course, but today, social media is very important and it tells a lot about you. So you have to be very careful about what you're using, using. So you cannot, why I'm telling you about social media, because you, know, you cannot manage any corporate page or institutional page without having the basics of managing your own. You start with yourself. You start building your reputation, your brand and reputation online is very important. And then you'll have different strategies to build and manage institutions online. Producing content, well, this is the picture that tells what I was feeling when I was talking to you about my social media platforms. I was like doing like this, oh my God, yes have a lot of tasks, a lot of challenges you have to write, you know, and you know, sometimes I'm from North Africa. I have to write in Arabic, in French, in English, and sometimes in Spanish and in my own language, Darija, Moroccan. It's a lot. You know why? Because I have nearly 5,000 people on my Facebook page. Although there's translator, but you know, it's nice to write in different languages because there are people who interact with you differently. You know, sometimes when I write in Arabic, you know, most Arabic speakers would interact with me, but not others. Maybe others would do so because of the translation, but sometimes I write the, the same message differently in English. Then I have all English speakers interact with me. And sometimes I put French, sometimes Spanish, you know, I have to di diversify the language because I have different people. And even I di for, diversify my style. Sometimes I'm serious. Sometimes I'm very funny. Sometimes I put something light. Sometimes I put something serious. Well, you have to. But it's a lot of effort. It's a job itself. If you have the means, you have to hire a staff. But if you don't have the means, you need to do that by yourself. So you have to learn, you have to upgrade your skills. Reputation. Reputation, believe me, is very important online. Because I told you, if I'm going to recruit someone, the first thing I do is I go to social media. Sometimes I even analyze the kind of a post. For example, I say, I'm going to see what this person is posting, for example, this month. Uh, keep analyzing what you're posting, then it tells me a little bit about your personality. Sometimes you can be fired from your job because of what you're posting. So you have to be very careful about what you're doing on social media. So it's become a necessity part of our life. Then when you build that, then you can be able to do campaigning about your project, 
about your institution, about your country, and about the continent. There are a lot of issues that the continent is facing. And today, we are advocating for inclusive digital policies so that nobody would left behind. And we know, and you know, that Africa faces a lot of challenge, more specifically internet infrastructure. We have a lot of problems related to power cuts. There are a lot of people in marginalized zone who do not have access to any type of digital platforms. So they don't have access to services. It's very important that we advocate for inclusive digital policies because today all services have been digitalized. So we're shifting towards e-learning, you know, we're shifting towards digitalization of all public services. We're using our financial transactions online. So everything, it's part of our life. But we need to advocate so that people, especially in the remote areas, or people who do not have access to these platforms would have access so that nobody would be left behind. We have to advocate for a raising the capacity of these people so that they can be using these platforms by their own. It's very important. So you start with yourself. Then here, let's, um, let me share with you the second part. Uh, I will be talking a little bit about civic uh, technology. So when, when, we, when we build in the skills of ourselves, because you cannot use technology to advocate for your country if you don't have the basics for yourself. So you need to upgrade your skills. You need to know how to use social media, how to use websites, how to create your own website, your own blog, how to use mobile uh, applications, how to use um, you know, uh, digital platform services to assist yourself first. And then you can assist others. Well, we're going digital. You know, in coronavirus, everything was shut down. All services gone digital. A lot of civil society actors, you know, they found themselves not ready for that, but they have to adapt and they have to engage online so that they could, they would continue advocating for the causes that they are advocating for, raising awareness about COVID-19 and a lot of other things. How they're going to do that, let's see. So first of all, using the internet and new communication technology, more specifically social media as we talked about it, it to engage citizens in decision-making pro processes through an open and participatory process. That's the goal that we want to talk about here. Because you know, if we want to participate in decision-making process, we need to do it whether offline or online then we need to put the, um, the necessary legislation and also the regulations and the infrastructure that is necessary for citizens to participate in decision-making to an open process. I'll give you an example. In your commune, for example, in case they use digital platforms, internet, for example, uh, in your city or village, they want to repair a road or they want to introduce a new line of buses and they need input of citizens. So they would post it online. They will ask citizens to provide input on that to collect their uh, comments so that they know whether citizens they want it or not. So this, this we call participation in decision-making processes. And, you know, 
there are different offline means that government is using it to do it. But today there are a lot of governments who are using uh, internet uh, and, and different online platforms so that they can collect uh, you know, comments of citizens to enable them participate in the decision-making process. Okay. Why important? Because first of all, a, a online, it's, it's um, a many-to-many -many communication. It's very important because before we used to communicate face-to-face, -face. I may communicate to you, but online I communicate with many. So it's challenging to get on the news frequently, especially airtime, for example, you know, citizens that are creating their own media. This is where we have the, the birth of citizen journalism. Now with YouTube and all that, people, you know, they create their own content, they put it on YouTube and they even gain money. They have their own channels. So you don't need to have a space in official media, you create your own media today. Information is available everywhere. Before it was restrictive to get information. Now it's available everywhere. There's more interaction, there's more transparency and there is a direct communication. Well, you need to craft it. You need content, good content, text, video, photo, etc. You need technology, you need the network, and you need participation and collaboration. So here, as you see, rich accessibility, usability, recency, and flexibility. That's what social media is. It's very important to ensure that you're reaching a maximum uh, people and that uh, this information is useful, accessible, this information is new, and then you have to be flexible because you have to communicate in real time with people, you have to respond to people, you have to take the time to understand their comments, to talk with them, interact, etc. As I said, it's a lot of job. Well, before it was not possible to take your phone and, you know, a film real real time, for example, an event or a strike or uh, anything that could happen in your community. Today, it has become possible. And as I said, you know, there's a birth of what we call social journalism. I'll give you an example, very good example a, of an online communication platform in Morocco. Uh, there is an, an organization that um, created a project called Nuabo. Nuwabuk, which is your MPs, your, your members of parliament. You know, at a certain time, it was very difficult to communicate with members of parliament. It was not accessible. But this organization has made it possible and they made an online platform where they communicate themselves, interacted with different MPs who were willing to answer questions of normal citizens, more specifically youth, on this platform. So it's not just their, um, their duty to answer questions uh, in the premises of the parliament, but online. So you, you, they can define a topic and then you can you know, uh, look for your MP and then you can ask a question and, and then um, you can ask a question. And at the same time, you can also vote for any type of a question that they, they would choose and then they would prepare their answers and then they would interact with you. The same thing when you ask an oral or written question in the parliament, you would do it uh, on this platform. But this not a platform is a civil society initiative. It's not an official platform in the parliament, but it's a civil society initiative, which is a good initiative that you know, open up you know, communication between MPs and citizens. You know. And sometimes they do a live, for example, with these uh, either conference or live uh, with one of the MPs and the MP is freely answering the questions of citizens. That is very important uh, to engage members of parliament with, uh, with young people. It's a very good initiative. It came from civil society. So using technology in order to increase participation and engage citizens you know, in dialogue with decision makers and with legislators is a very good initiative. Okay, so there are different mobile applications 
now that a lot are using, you know, uh, in order to um, communicate uh, with, you know, uh, different audiences, whether they are initiated by government or by civil society, but they're very good in engaging people. Commu the communication and the flow of the communication is, uh, is established. For example, ICT Civic Engagement app. Um, there are lots of communes, for example, now that they're doing a mobile application for the city for engagement with citizens. So you would ask anything about your city. You can reach out to your elected uh, uh, official and ask a question, uh, anything related uh, to the building of certain neighborhoods, et cetera, et cetera. A diaspora application, for example, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mexico, they have very, very good mobile application called Diaspora, Mexico Diaspora. And it is used to communicate with diaspora, Mexican diaspora all across the world. And it has also information about Mexico, about the government, uh, and also it can uh, locate uh, uh, its citizens through this um, a mobile application in case of a crisis that, ha that could happen in a given country. So this is something uh, interesting. Uh, let's brainstorm with, with mobile devices education. There are a lot of mobile education uh, designed for e-learning or for a, uh, design thinking and brainstorming. Um, you can find them uh, uh, on, on the mobile app uh, platform. Uh, also, for example, um, there are many platforms that are used by civil society, for example, to um, a report on a sexual harassment and to report on a sexual abuse or any uh, kind of violence against women using uh, uh, GPS, geolocalization, and it is connected with the uh, civil society organizations and, you know, the uh, competent administration like police and et cetera, so that they would save uh, women from violence. So these are some of the things that could be uh, interesting uh, and that people are using to um, a, uh, uh, that that are using it to um, uh, engage citizens in in decision making. Uh, online forums and strategies and program, for example, there was there was uh, Global Pulse twenty twenty. It was um, initiated by the U.S. government and it was a, a three day online. Uh, a platforms like a hackathon, uh, building a strategy for development. A, for example, this is um, an online platform called Fikra for uh, Fikra, which is an idea for a better Morocco. They collected best ideas, hundred idea for a better Morocco, so, and people participated in. A, there were, for example, a um, an advocacy campaign online called a you know. A, uh, um, the digital uh, code will, will would not pass, and which which is a campaign that was run by activists in Morocco, for example, to, to stop one of the legislation that was uh, presented by the government, and they see that it was restrictive restrictive of freedom of expression, and you know people you know they advocate on it online, and actually the uh, the project law was stopped because of the campaign of uh, young people online. So, you know, there, the, the, it is uh, an, an important uh, platform to use for advocacy. Uh, so um, today, uh, all campaigns are using digital platforms to advocate for change. So for example, here are some of the uh, key best practices that um, we, we might use uh, in, in our different types of online campaigns. For example, you need, uh, first of all, to define and conceptualize uh, youth civic engagement in social media. As I said, objectives are very important. So here you said we, we started from a, you know, a talking about us and our ability, then our uh, strategizing about campaigning. So define, conceptualize, is important. Provide an overview of current uh, research, a, a um, uh, research uh, on civic engagement, in social media. A, uh, present pre preliminary analysis of how you conceptualize civic engagement 
And finally, uh, suggest guidelines on designing for youth civic engagement. Because here the, 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 the issue is not the digital platform, but also the, but, but the uh, most important thing is the engagement uh, uh, for civic participation, but moving it online, adapting it to, uh, to the digital platform. And here you would use what we call digitalization, which is physical digital. So it's a mark, it's a kind of a mix between offline and online. It's very important because you have different audiences. Some of your audiences are online, others are offline. Uh, what is also important is listening. Listening is very important. Listening, sharing, collaborating, engaging. You have to recall those words. You have to listen to your audience. You have to have the ability to share, collaborate, and engage. Um, understanding the interest and cultures of Facebook community uh, is uh, key to crafting a, uh, a posting. So uh, understanding the interest, learning the persona of your uh, audience, of your pages is, very, is, is important. Humanize. You know, as I told you, people don't like to read. They, don't, they, they like to visualize. They like to, to, to see photos. They like to uh, listen to um, videos watch and see, you know, but you need to humanize, put some human touch. Don't put a photos of boring conferences, uh, put photos with people, action photos, something that speaks, something that uh, shows smiling faces, that shows action, community service, uh, dancing, entertainment, something that people would like and react, but craft a very important message uh, around it. Tell a story. You need to be a very good storyteller. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to convince your audiences. You know, you need to have to be able to identify the uh, stories that would resonate with your audience, and you need to have the skills of storytelling. You need to learn how to tell a story. And then you have to complement between um, the social, uh, social media and a traditional media. For example, you're running a show, inform your audience on social media that your show will be on television at this time. You know, please follow it, watch it. And then after the show, you have to edit the show and then repost it uh, on social media. So um, you need to uh, combine uh, a marketing mix of social and traditional uh, media on that. And then engage through video and live stream, but don't overdo it. Because, you know, a, from coronavirus till now, you know, we got a lot of, uh, you know, what we call media fatigue and social media fatigue. A lot of people are doing lives, sometimes lives for nothing, but you know, have to be strategic about doing your live stream and sharing your content. Engage through Twitter, you know, Twitter is important, but uh, also, but also uh, Twitter is a more event oriented and, you know, you would be uh, targeting the right people on Twitter, more specifically, if you're targeting uh, UN people, diplomats and uh, development people, they're all AU people, for example, they're all on Twitter. So you need to target at mention those people, get the right message uh, for them on Twitter. All right, finally, again and again, we talk about strategy. So have a vision, know your audience. Uh, you need to uh, have a leadership buy-in and commitment. Uh, you need to hire, if you are an organization, social media specialist. Otherwise, if you're doing it yourself, you need to build your skills on social media a community management, but at the same time, you have to accompany it with a whole set of skills like graphic design, video editing, etc. Uh, you need to um, uh, to train your staff. You're working with collaborators. You need to train them. And then, if you are working with different organization, you need to have a an inter or uh, agency or a coordination uh, because you would need to craft, you know, messages that are not contradictory. Uh, and then if you're working within an organization that, that has a lot of clearance processes, you need to, to find a way how to ease the bureaucracy 
uh, because you know in social media is instant information. You have to improve the quality and relevance of your content. Content and content and content is very important. You know, uh, expand reach and increase interaction. You need to have a strategy to increase your audience, either by sponsorship or by organic, uh, you know, uh, funds. Jargon free. Please don't use technical words. You know, make your message as easy as possible so that people would understand it. And you know, you may speak also in your vernacular language. And the last part is monitor your size and evaluate your impact. You cannot move on and change your strategy if you don't monitor your impact. You have to see whether you're, whether you're influential or not, and then whether you are using the right uh, strategies or not. For example, in my page for this week, I, I see uh, that, for example, what I'm posting is so popular, it gets a lot of funds, a lot of comments. At a certain time, I see that it's going down. Oh, I have to question myself, is it the kind of post? Is it the, the, uh, the, the frequency? Is it the time frame? Uh, is it the content? What shall I do? Then, okay, I have to go back and see who is my audience. Why my audience is reacting on this type of post and not this type of post. Oh, maybe I have to combine this with this and then I create a different type of post so that I can ensure at least that I have, you know, sustained comments and likes, etc. So you need to monitor each time so that you can change your strategy. It, your social media strategy is not a fixed strategy, believe me, because people change, because events change, because context change. So you have to go with the flow and every week or every month you have to change. If you put this objective, you might have a different objective because you have to adapt to your audience. Audience is a key. So. I hope you are a, you know, a, a, let's say, a ready for, you know, embracing digitalization, starting with a basic step, doing it within your organization, using, uh, using different um, a, um, digital initi initiatives so that you would uh, create channels of communication with your audiences. It depends on your project. A, and uh, if you have funding, go beyond and create mobile applications uh, or uh, any type of solutions, uh, uh, for example, e-platforms for education or anything so that you would um, contribute to a, a solving different development prob problems in, in Africa. A, and at the same time, you know, a, put your strategy start from your digital passport, it means you, and then your own community organization. And then uh, you would fit initially uh, with a bigger scale a strategy going up to, to um, work beyond social media, moving to uh, the use and analysis of big data, using uh, artificial intelligence and or, or uh, adopting uh, you know strategies for uh, promoting uh, robotics and, and others to to solve uh, complicated uh, uh, issues uh, that could be used uh, for a, um, any type of development projects in Africa. So again, the basics is you. The key to this is build your skills upgrade your skills, uh, follow the trends, you know, uh, each time you have to be aware of what's going on and, you know, build your strategy and have a, a flexible strategy so that you would adapt it according to the transformation that we're undergoing uh, today. Uh, and I hope that this presentation, presentation was very useful for you. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to be working with you. Thank you.